welcome. This morning, we're here in Chicago at the Shedd Aquarium with the one and only Francis Crable, who is a PhD student at the University of Illinois, Chicago, studying Arctic ecology and biogeochemistry. Francis is well known for her trips, multiple trips across the Northwest Passage. She's here to teach us a lot about the Arctic Ocean and its impact on life, but also about resilience and perseverance. So let's head in to where it all began for you at the Shedd Aquarium. Thank you so much, Francis, yes, for you being for with us today. Me. I'm so glad to be here. The Shedd Aquarium is so important to just my career and where my love for marine biology really started. So it's really cool to be able to do this. It here. is very special for us to be here. So tell us about this place and about how uh, sort of your love and passion for marine biology began. Yeah, so I grew up in Chicago and I wasn't really like a, like a nature kid. I didn't really like the outdoors, but I did really have a passion for animals and I like to read and watch, you know, PBS nature shows. Um, and then one day in high school, I needed to find some extracurriculars to do. So I just Googled the Shedd Aquarium and see like what sort of opportunities for teenagers they had. And that's when I got involved in the work study program for teens here. So on weekends, I would come and I would stand in front of exhibits like the Caribbean Reef here and teach different guests about the animals and sort of what happens here and got to learn a lot about what happened behind the scenes as well. And then I sort of just like worked my way through all the different teen programs they had. I started in um, high school lake ecology where we went on a week long kayaking and camping trip to study lake ecology and Lake Superior. And then I also did marine uh, high school marine biology um, where we went to the Bahamas on a research vessel for a week to study coral reef and mangrove conservation. So the Shedd Aquarium is the place where that showed me that a career in field research and science is totally possible and what really sparked my interest in doing things like that. Wonderful. So it sounds like this place has had a deep impact on your career. Mm -hmm. I understand that you have made three separate attempts to cross the Northwest Passage. Tell us about each one. Sure. So I was part of something called the Northwest Passage Project, which was um, an NSF and Heising Simmons Foundation funded research project that allowed undergraduate students to participate in Arctic Ocean research in the Canadian archipelago. Um, so in 2017, I was part of um, this class of 23 students, and there were many roles for students like in communication or data analysis. And I was one of the students chosen to actually participate in the expedition and go up to the Northwest Passage to do the data collection. <laughs> so that was your first, your first time that you were, you were supposed to go, but you didn't end up going. Yes, we were supposed to go on this ship called the Oliver and Hazard Perry, which was this big three mast sailing ship. And we were going to help sail the ship ourselves. But just because of the feasibility and the safety concerns with the sea ice, the trip was canceled um, into the next year. Wow. So then you didn't give up then. You went a second time. Yeah. Tell so us about that trip. I continued on um, doing research with the project on coral reefs and wetland ecosystems. Um, during that year, we were supposed to go on the Canadian icebreaker, but they had an engine failure. So we picked a different ship, which was the Academic Yafe, which is a Russian cruise ship. So it had tourists on it as well as us scientists. Mm -hmm. And we traveled up to the Northwest Passage. And after one night on the ship, um, we ran aground and hit a rock and were stuck. Um, so we had Coast Guard planes um, flying around us. And after 26 hours, um, another ship nearby was able to come and rescue us. That must have been terrifying. <laughs> but you came home and you were you were not giving up. You were still thinking you're going to yes, the Northwest Yes, I Canada. was so, so hurt that, uh, you know, we didn't we set up all of this and we didn't get to do any of it. And I just met this amazing group of people that I really connected with and hope to do science with. But I just continued on. Um, I wasn't sure if whether uh, whether or not I would get to participate in the project again because I was graduating. So I just applied to grad school. Um, I accepted a position at UIC and they allowed me to continue with the project as a graduate student. So instead of an undergraduate, I would get to sort of have a larger role um, leading undergraduates and working on my own research ideas as well. So that summer we were able to have a successful trip through the Northwest Passage on the Swedish icebreaker Odin, 
where we got to do so many amazing things. We did live broadcasts from the Arctic to museums and to Facebook Live. We were able to work closely with the Inuit communities up there and get sort of their ancestral knowledge about the changes that are happening and how it's affecting their communities. We were able to take a bunch of data and do a bunch of sampling as well. So it was, it was really great and turned out Incredible. perfect. And if you couldn't get there the first two times, now you had an actual ship breaking the ice yes. and making the path <laughs> yeah. through, through the Northwest Passage for you. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad you finally got a chance to accomplish this. Yeah. such an incredible feat at 24 years old. Yes. Really exciting. Yeah. Phenomenal. As you think of back to those three different trips, and especially the, the last one that was successful, what did they teach you about resilience or perseverance? Yeah, so perseverance is really important when you're doing scientific research because science goes wrong a lot. Mm. And you need to be prepared for that. You need to be ready for it to happen. And you need to mentally be prepared to just not give up and know that what you're doing is really important. And just because it's hard, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And just in general, I think, if you are passionate about something and you are interested in it, just keep going. Like things get hard, but hard work definitely pays off. Like you never know what could happen. And sometimes your path doesn't necessarily look the way you imagined it, or it might take some more time. But as long as there's still opportunities out there and you're still interested, definitely just keep going because you never know what could happen. You could end up being like a 24 year old Arctic Ocean scientist. <laughs> Pretty impressive. So talk to us about what you're doing now and how that trip has informed your yeah. current day work. So I um, have sort of based my PhD research at UIC off of this Arctic Ocean trip I took. Um, so I'm building off of sort of the data we collected there. I'm really interested in sort of these freshwater inputs into the Arctic and how this is gonna change things like nutrient cycles and productivity in that region. Um, so I hope to continue um, traveling through the Northwest Passage and sort of studying the Canadian Arctic. Um, I hope to travel through the entire Northwest Passage and not just sort of a small portion of it. Um, I'm also working really closely with the Norwegian Institute of Water Research um, in Norway. And I hope to expand sort of some of my questions to the Norwegian coast. They have um, something called their North Soup project where they have these um, ships of opportunities like ferries or freight ships um, that sort of go back and forth daily and they have sensors and are doing continuous sampling. Mm -hmm. So they're collecting all this data and I hope to sort of use some of that data and go on some of these ships to sort of apply my questions from the Canadian Arctic to the Norwegian coast as well. Um, something I'm working on currently is growing phy Arctic phytoplankton cultures in a lab setting so that I can do sort of my own manipulations with CO2 or with light or with temperature and see how um, things are going on in the lab as well. Francis, bring us full circle to working with young people and some of the ideas that you have to ensure that you are not the exception with stories like this. Sure. So one of my friends and I, she works at a national park. We were just sort of talking recently about how there's a lot of stigma for brown and black kids and to go outdoors and into nature, whether they're scared or they don't have the opportunities. We want to sort of help break that barrier by starting um, sort of like a summer program, like the ones I participated here at SHED for students in Chicago, for them to go to national parks, go on hikes, learn about conservation, learn about different careers in science and climate policy. You know, I believe there's going to be this big generation of climate scientists and mm. climate informed citizens. And we just want to make sure that brown and black kids from Chicago are um, have the opportunity to participate in that. Francis, thank you so much for sharing your story and your vision for the future. We're really lucky to spend this time with you here thank today. Thank you so much. <laughs>